of the afternoon. <laughs> Yay! Next on the program, you have my brother here called Dr. Vincent Tan. Okay? Not my real bro brother. It's a, you know, brother in many things. <laughs> like raw foods. We are both raw foodists. And he is really like one of the strictest raw foodists we have in the community. He stops eating at 6 o'clock. Eh? Yeah, we, we are still like munching, munching after that and he stops at 6. And you know, and Dr. Tan, he's very special. He graduated from NUS Medical School with a uh, medical degree in 2003. And subsequently, he obtained his Master's of Medicine in Surgery from Edinburgh in 2006. He's a colorectal surgeon. And he spent seven years working in Singapore General Hospital until 2010. <coughs> As a medical doctor, he was hoping to ease the pain and trauma suffered by his mother when she was diagnosed with cancer. Unfortunately, he had to watch helplessly as the wonders of modern medicine failed to save her or even reduce her traumatic suffering. Now this painful but powerful experience transformed his perspective to life. He always told us um, the story of how you know, how this experience transformed him to not want to jump into the river at a very late stage to save people who are already drowning, but how he would like to walk upstream and to save people, people before they even fall into the river. Okay? Now, so it awakened within him a sense of compassion and a desire to learn about natural health principles. And armed with a caring heart and the newly acquired knowledge, he set about working with his two aunts who are suffering from diabetes and um, also some coronary issues. And they have since successfully come off anti-diabetic medications and improved their health dramatically. Right? So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my respected bro, uh, Dr. Vincent Khan. So I've been a doctor for how long? 
Yeah, about 10 years, I, I, I stopped doing medicine in the year 2010, and I decided to become a life coach. How many of you know what a life coach is? Thank you very much. How many of you don't know what a life coach is? Thank you very much. How many don't care what a life coach is? <laughs> Okay, as, as a life coach, I actually work with uh, my clients to create the life of their dreams because how many realize that you can live life exactly the way that you want it? Okay, thank you very much. And as illustration of what human beings can produce, this was me when I was younger. <laughs> okay, how many of you noticed a little bit of a change? <laughs> I was about 130% overweight. So when I was younger, guess which lesson I hated the most? PE, how come? <laughs> Sweat, and then PE, we have to? Have to change. And usually the girls change where? In the toilet, but the guys change where? In the classroom. At that point of time, I was very embarrassed to pick up my shirt. How come? I was fat, and then point of time I had? <laughs> I had many breasts. Okay, and not only that, my nipples were inverted. <laughs> so I was absolutely embarrassed to change my clothes. Okay, that was when I was like, and when I was younger, all my uncles, when he used to see me, he used to do this. He used to pinch my nipple. <laughs> he turned my whole face got contorted. <laughs> How many of you can relate to that? <laughs> okay, okay so you're all very lucky. So that was me when I was younger. Okay, however, we have the power to change anything that we do not like. And so I decided to become a life coach because I realized that nothing is permanent. Nothing is what? Permanent. Not, nothing is permanent. Everything constantly changes. changes. Okay, so turn to the person next to you, look at me, I give a high five and say, everything changes. Everything changes. <laughs> okay, it reminds me of the time that I was working in a, a major hospital in Singapore. I was working in the emergency department. Okay, and whenever patients used to come in, and usually they come in many, many, many times. They come in over and 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 over. And it's not because they want to see me. Okay, how many of you find that a little bit strange? Strange, how many it's just normal? How many don't know what I'm talking about? Thank you very much. In fact, I had a patient who in 180 days was in the hospital about 160 days. Okay, out of 180 days, since our six month period, they were in the emergency department for how many days? For 160 days, so they kept coming in over and over and over again. And whenever I saw these patients, I'll open up their case file and I'll see the whole ton of what they're on. Medication they're on. And then I would immediately look at them and say, Did you take your medicine or not? <laughs> And then they'll say, sorry doctor, I didn't take. They'll say, ah, because you didn't take your medicine, that's why you're sick and take your medicine, I just don't come back. And I realized at that point of time, I was very, I was very close. Okay, I have stopped doing this. Okay, I have stopped doing what? How many realized realize that we're living in very interesting times? Thank you. Interesting in the sense that we're moving at the speed of thought. Okay, in fact, a fundamental skill in order to survive in today's society is the skill of learning. Okay, in fact, Alvin Toffler, how many of you have heard of Alvin Toffler before? Thank you. Who's Alvin Toffler? Yes, he's a futurist. Thank you very much. He wrote the book Future Shock and he said that the third of the 21st century is no longer the person who cannot read or write, but it's the person who doesn't know how to. Okay, learn, unlearn, and relearn. Can everybody say it with me? <laughs> okay, so turn to the person next to you, look at me in the eye, give a high five and say, Congratulations for learning today. <laughs> and once I started to learn to learn again, okay, I discovered the miracle of the human body. How many of you realize that your body is a miracle of nature? Thank you. Let me just remind those of you who may have forgotten your brain weighs only 3 pounds. How heavy is your brain? Yeah. It's three pounds. You can store more information than the entire world trade center can store into this kind of technology. And it takes less electricity to run a brain than it takes to run a light bulb. Your eyes can make 10 million distinctions in a millisecond. It's more powerful than any camera ever invented. Your heart beats about 100 times 
I read thousand times every single day, and do you have to ask your heart to beat a single time? No, no it drives blood around 60,000 miles of blood vessels, enough to circle the globe two times. Okay, your muscles in all to pull in the same direction will generate the force 25 times. That is the miracle of your human body. So give your partner a high five, give it a high five, uh, and say, you are a miracle. <laughs> So if our body is a miracle, what's happening to our current health condition? Yeah, it's changing. Okay, it, in what way is it changing? Anybody knows what's happening in our health scene today? It's getting worse. In what sense? Treating symptoms, not causes. What else? Overdose? What's the rate of cancer today? One in three. Thank you very much, one in three. What's the rate of heart disease? One in, two, and the age is getting younger. Okay, I saw a 30 plus year old woman with three young kids who suffer from cancer of the colon with spread to the liver already. It's ha happening to younger and younger people. So if our body is a what of nature? Miracle of nature. What causes people to fall sick? Okay, so I want everybody to please find a partner. Find a partner. Okay, I want you to discuss with your partner what are some of the potential causes of people, so many people falling sick nowadays. Okay, wait, wait, have, have, who does not have a partner? Okay, Ram and Alice. Okay, pick a partner A and a partner B. Yes, in a moment you all will share. Okay, partner A, partner B. Okay, partner A, raise your hand. Partner A, raise your hand, point to partner B. Okay, say, you teach me first. Please, for two minutes, and I have to like switch. Your two minutes begin now. Pollution, not enough sleep, stress, 
Round four. Come on. 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 A state of health is being in a state of vitality and energy and not merely an absence of disease. Thank you very much. So, healthy people are usually very energetic. So, if health is energy, where does energy come from? The universe. And you have an entire universe in your whole body. And if you go down into the microcosm, the entire universe is your cell. How many cells do you have in your body? Trillions of cells. How many of you know that you are actually a CEO of a company that employs over a trillion employees? <laughs> I'm serious! Your company has trillions of employees and what is the salary of your employees? <laughs> What's the salary? You see whether you have a good boss knowing how to pay your employees or not? Yeah, we're giving them fiat money. Crap. Okay, so what is, what is their true the thing they desire for? Real nourishment. What's the most important nourishment without which the cells will perish very, very quickly? Air. What's the second most important thing? And what's the third thing? Chocolates. <laughs> what else? Not food, not chocolates. There's something which may be more important than food, chocolate, and nutrition. Love. It's a clean environment. It's a what kind of environment? A clean environment, the ability to eliminate waste. Because if the waste accumulates, what happens? The stock said, who's not happy? The workers are not happy. Okay, in fact, going back to water. Last time, how many of you were kids before? <laughs> You're born as adults, ah? <laughs> Can I ask you, how many of you were kids before? <laughs> Thank you very much to be all of you. When, when you were a kid, when you were sick, who did you go and see? <laughs> Doctor? <laughs> Doctor William Hank. Go and see your? Mother. See your mother, and what did your mother ask you to do? <laughs> Just drink? Water. Water, and then you got? Sick. Better, in fact, there was a doctor called Dr. Batman. Doctor what? Doctor Batman. He was a political prisoner, and in the prison, all the inmates started to fall. Sick. Yeah, and when they fell sick, they didn't have something in the in the prison. So what didn't they have? Yes, they didn't have medicine. So what did Doctor Batman do? He just asked them to drink water. Water. And what happened to all the, the sick inmates? They got. Wow. Oh. Turn to the person next to you. Give them the idea. I find say, wow, the doctor so easy one. Ah. <laughs> Hey, please lah, do it lah. I don't know, I don't know. Okay, now turn to another person, give them an eye and say, Wow, I am a doctor also leh. Okay, because one of nature's answer to pollution, okay, nature's answer to what? Pollution is dilution. Because if we don't dilute all the toxins, we get into a toxic state. Okay, and who is not happy? Our cells are not happy and they start to give conditions like this. Okay, how many of you have seen a leg like this before? I've seen what's a what's the condition? Thank you very much. It's elephantiasis. Okay, what happens in elephantiasis is the lymph drainage gets impeded. Okay, so in other words, the toxins don't get what away? They don't get flushed away and our tissues degenerate, forming this. So once we understand that and what our cells need, so what causes diseases? Okay, I'm going to just teach you three simple things. How many simple things? Three. Three simple things. They will allow you to become a very effective doctor. By knowing this, you can heal anybody. Okay, you don't need a MBBS. That you spend five years studying for. The first reason for people falling sick is what? It's auto intoxication. Everybody say it together. Auto intoxication. Thank you very much. What does auto mean? Self. So what are some of the poisons that people are putting in their bodies nowadays? 
The mind. Thank you. What else? Ajinomoto. What else? Curry. <laughs> Chocolates. Bata. <laughs> okay, the second reason why people fall sick is because of? Can everybody say together? Deficiency. What are people deficient in nowadays? Minerals. What else? Water. Thank you. Vitamins. What else? Sleep. Okay, when an animal is sick, what does the animal automatically do? Sleep. It sleeps. But today, when people are sick, what do they do? Wow. They work even harder or they see the doctor who prescribed them medicine and they think they are going to get better. The medicine will make them feel better, but it gives an illusion of power. It gives an illusion of what? It just drop, flocks the horse a little bit more, they think they are healed. But after that, after the rise in power, there is a crash. What they need is rest and sleep. So the doctor is good for giving the MC <laughs> to let them rest. Okay? And the third reason why people fall sick is because of what? And most people nowadays, they blame genetics because genetics, I bore. Ball pen. It's what my book gave me. What my parents gave me. However, there's new research that shows that we can actually rewrite our genes. Is it? Yes. Okay, we can have further conversations. We can actually rewrite our genes. And change our genes are not permanent and fixed. Because remember, everything is changing. Changing. Everybody say everything is changing. Thank you very much. Okay, now I want all of you to, for this to stick in your mind, I want you to teach your partner what you just learned and to become powerful doctors. Okay, so go back to your partner. Okay, this time I want the partner with the bigger nose to teach the smaller nose one first for two minutes. Okay, I'll let you know when to switch and go. Smile at you, but once you turn your back, they stop. 
stop working already. And if they are driven more to the wall, what eventually do they do? What do they do? They sabotage. And this, my brothers and sisters, is a cancer. It is only our workers who have not been treated well. Okay, so you remember earlier I was I was saying that whenever the patients came in and didn't take their medicine, I will start to make it who's fault. Their fault, okay? That they didn't take their medicine and that's why they were not well. Okay, until I started to look do one again. Until I started to do what? Learn again. Okay, when I started to learn, learn, to learn again, I realized that a lot of the common ailments that we are facing in today's society is reversible. Is what? Okay, everybody say louder. It is? It's reversible. Okay, so when my mom had cancer, okay, I thought it was reversible. Okay, I gave it my all. Okay, ever since I was younger, okay, I consider myself quite a successful person. Okay, what do you think created that success in me? A very strong sense of belief. Okay, it's my parents' love. Okay, when a person is loved, they can fail and fall down time and time and time again and they'll just get back. Get back what? Get back on their feet. If you look at a child learn, as long as the mother's by their side, they can keep falling and falling and... But the baby will keep on climbing up. Okay, and when I was younger, when I went to... I, I love to play the guitar. Okay, because I used to love to play the guitar too. Because I wanted to... <laughs> okay, because girls seem to love guys who can sing and play. So my mom bought my first guitar for me. Okay, my first guitar was about $1,000 and my mom is a very thrifty person. She will walk three bus stops carrying 20 kilograms of groceries to save 35 cents on the bus fare. Okay, and my first guitar, she just paid $1,000 for me. Then after that, I got bought of my guitar and I wanted to play the drums. I love the drums. Who got, guess who bought my first drum kit for me? My mother again. And everyone in the family actually didn't really like the drum set because it's very, it's very noisy. Except my mother, to, to her it was like what to her ears? It was like music to her ears. After I got into medical school, so she went and tell everybody, Oh, my son is going to be a doctor. Then after I got into surgery, she said, Oh, my son is going to be a doctor. Then after I realized that I like to speak. And I said, Ma, I don't want to be a doctor. I don't want to be a doctor already. Okay, I want to go and be a speaker. And you guess what my mother did? She said, hey, come and listen to my son speak. He's such a great speaker. Come and listen to him. Okay, but sometimes there are only two people in the audience. And one of them was who? <laughs> mother. Okay, everyone in my family thought I had gone crazy already. Okay, so when my mom actually got cancer, I thought I could actually reverse the disease. Okay, I learned a lot from that experience. Okay, my mom passed away from cancer about two years ago. Okay, it was one of the most painful periods of my life. Uh, how many of you realize actually the most painful periods of your life can be the most fulfilling periods of your life also? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. So she passed on. And how many of you also realize you're always given second chances? Yeah, we're always, always given a, a second chance. Okay, the second chance came in the form of my two aunties. Okay, both are my mom's sisters. Okay, both of them have diabetes, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol for more than a decade. One of them developed coronary artery disease, so she had very severe pain when she was working. Okay, and she, she was told she they couldn't do an operation, and that is her lifesaver. Okay, because they couldn't perform a bypass. So I knew the power of nutrition. So I flew over to New Zealand, I spent a month with her, and guess who killed her? Who killed her? <laughs> Say louder. It's not me. She cured herself. The only cure is self-cure. Can everybody say with me? The only cure is self-cure. Nobody cures another human being. All they give is their attention and their love. That's it. But healing happens automatically. So she came off all her medications and her heart condition improved. Now the second auntie came to stay with me and again, who cured her? Herself. The only cure is what cure? Yes. It's, it's her determination. Okay, she had a show about 10 years ago. 
And she came, she stayed with me for about close to half a year already. And in the first week, because she was willing to go full raw, she came off all her child pills. She had a stroke how long ago? 10 years ago. She came off all her pills, her blood pressure dropped to normal, her sugar control came to normal. Okay, so in the last six months, she's lost 20 kilograms. She is 70 years old. Diabetes reverse, her last sugar check was 4.3. Okay, for those who know sugar level, that is excellent. Without any pills. Her blood pressure last check was 116 systolic. That's better than some 30 year olds I know. Okay, and now she meditates two hours a day. One hour in the morning, one hour at night. And after she told me she can't even sit for 15 minutes. And again, who did this for her? Yeah, so turn to the person next to you, look at me, I get high, high five and say, you're a self-healing machine. <laughs> So you all have been a wonderful audience. Okay, there's more distinctions to be made. Okay, if you, you want, you can come and speak to me. Most diseases can be reversed very easily. Okay? So the specifics, I'll leave for those who have specific questions to, to speak to me. However, right now, I want everybody to please stand up. Okay, put your hands in the air. Turn to your right. Put your hand on the shoulders of the person in front of you and give a wake up massage. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Vincent Tan.